We're going to run a confirmatory factor analysis from the data from the guided homework for the exploratory factor analysis. Okay. Um, the only one quick reminder is we ran a parallel analysis in the exploratory factor analysis, and it told us to keep only four of the predictors. So we're going to preset this to, to do four, and I'll just do this real quick. Analyze dimension reduction factor. And we want everybody in the pool here. Descriptives. What the heck, you know? Boom, 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 boom. I do this automatically. I can't even help myself anymore. And we're just going to do PCA. Okay. And we want four factors only. Period. Again, that was the parallel analysis. If you can't remember that, watch the video. Rotation. We're going to vary max. That's the orthogonal rotation. The direct oblimin is the oblique. So if you think your new factors are not going to be strongly related, use Verimax. If you think they are going to be strongly related, use the oblimin. And we'll make some new scores. Same as new variables. Don't know what that means. And options. We're going to sort by size. And we don't want anything that doesn't load up under 0.4. And again, that is depends on the book or the teacher. Some guys use 0.3. We're ready to go. Bam. Now, the only thing we're really looking for is I'm trying to figure out which of these load up under which of the new factors. So, one, two, three, four. So, that means we can explain 53.68% of the variance and how they're being answered. Component matrix. No, we want the rotated. The rotated component matrix, it kind of weeds out. It rakes out the overlapping variance as much as possible, but you still have some questions that are double loading, right? They're loading up under more than one factor. But this is our main thing that we're going to go by. This is what we're going to use in our confirmatory factor analysis. So let me put you on hold for a second. Confirmatory factor analysis time, CFA. Let's hope I can get through this in one beautiful sweep. Here we go. We're going to go to analyze. We're going to go to Amos. Boom. We're going to whistle a happy tune. <whistles> All right. We're in Amos. So let me pull up my... So here it is right here. I am going to go ahead and, and put a graphic on a video so we can tell who's who. But the first one is... We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the first one. 10 for the second one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for the third one, and 4. So 9, 10, 5, 4. Okay, hold on. So the first new factor has 9 items. Click. So this is going to be a big one. We should probably make these pretty small. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The second one has 10 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The third one has five. Uno, dos, tres. Let's see. Cuatro, cinco is five. <laughs> and then this one had four. One, two, three, four. Okay, let's pretty them up a little bit. And again, I like mine all on the left hand side because that's where you pass the dough cheap. Anybody get that joke? Has the dochi on the left hand side, man. All right, let's get these pretty. Let's see. I want to keep the things together, and I want to move them. All right, I want to move them so I can see them. Let's start with this bottom one, I guess. And again, if you got too many items, it's going to make your picture look kind of funky. And right, we got overlap there, so I don't want to overlap, but uh, let me move it over here. Oh, I got it. I'll, I'll turn it around. We'll get fancy. Fancy, fancy, fancy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. So we can do that. What I'm worried about is when I put in the covariances between the new factors here, that they might be funky, funky, but let me see if I can make it just a little bit cleaner. Eh, okay, that's good enough for government work. So again, since this is uh, anonymous data, which which means it doesn't tell you what the questions are, the items are, 
we just labeled them 1 through 28. Uh, one of these days, I should probably give you real labels in here. I'm going to go ahead and name these guys. And, right, that's object properties. I'm just going to do the same that I did in the second one. This will be the first new variable. And, right, that had 9. This one had 10. That was the second new variable. And this was the third. And this one was the Mr. Fourth. Fourth. Did you spell it right? I think I did. Okay. It's weird. Fourth and four have a U in it, but the word 40 does not. Uh, that always threw me as a kid. So, all right. So we're there. Next step, let's get the data. We're going to go to, no, there's our data. Um, no, let's get the data set. File name. And where did I put this bad boy? I put it right here on desktop. And confirmatory factor analysis video guided homework. That's the right one. So we got the data set in there. Now let's load them up. Boom, ba boom, boom, boom. So there's our list. And let me make our my references. Please hold. All right. Question 22. Question 16. Oh, yeah. Remember, no missing values. If you get missing values, you're going to get a lot of error messages. I hope this is, has no missing values because I forgot to check. But we'll look that in there. So it's question 14. 17, lucky 13, question 8, you'll notice question 8's got some overlap between factor 1 and factor 2, so that might be a problem, same with 21, might be a problem, might not be a problem, and 15, Last for the first one is question 10. Okay, question 10. So for the second one, it's question 3, 7, 24. You know what? You don't need to see me load these up. I'm going to go ahead and pause this. All right, second new factor done. Let's move on to the third one. Number three, looks like question two. Question six. Uh, question 18. Question one and nine. Question one and nine. Number nine. And last but not least, for the fourth one, it is question five, question 28, question 23, and question 12. Okay, don't need the variables in data set, boom. We do need to label the little circles here. Those are error terms. We're going to go to the plugin, name unobserved variables. They're all error terms. We need to go to the output. Where's the output data? No, it's not the output data. There it is. Analysis properties. So this is going to show up on the output. We so maximum likelihood is default. Uh, always click estab estimate means and intercepts. The rest of this stuff, I don't know what it is. Numerical, bias, output, I do know. So minimize, minimization history. You want the standardized estimates. You want the residual moments. You want the modification indices. This one's very important. The rest of this stuff is kind of over my head, but I think we got it enough for now. Now we're going to need to add some covariances. Now there's a plug-in for it, but I always get an error message. Let me show you. So you got to pick two. I don't know how to pick two. So it's easier just to, you know, right click, draw your covariances. So remember every pairwise comparison. So one first to second, first to third, first to fourth. Okay. So second 
to third, second to fourth. Okay, third to fourth. That's one, two, three, four. That's a lot. Now let's clean them up with the magic time. Love that tool. Love that tool. Love that tool. Love that tool. All right. I believe we're ready to go. Keep your fingers crossed. We're going to hit the calculate. That's the little abacus here. We're going to calculate the estimates, and hopefully we didn't get any error messages. Oh, forgot to save it. Let's save it as... Uh, I'm going to put it where I can find the damn thing. Uh, CFA. And so this is CFA guided homework video. I uh, saved it. So now it's running. So it did it already. So if you see this over here where it says standardized estimates, then you're good to cool. Um... Incomplete data, that's what I was afraid of. We might have missing data, so please hold. Well, I'll be horse whipped. There is a total of nine pieces of missing data. So there's several ways to do that, but to make this a shorter video, I'm simply going to replace all the missing data. So which one would be in the middle? Four. I'm going to put four in there. That's the middle. That's the median. So question two is missing one value. Question three is missing one value. Where are you? There's one. And four is okay, five is okay. I'm going to make a video on how I'm figuring these out real quick. You guys would be impressed, I hope. All right, let's try this again. I think I replaced the nine missing, so we're going to go ahead and try to calculate again. No error message, no error message, no error message, no error message. Hey, us. Now, here's the loading values. You'll notice that they haven't been standardized. So if you want to look at the standardized values, which we do, you just click this little button over this line there, and then that gets it down to where you want. So remember, for confirmatory factor analysis, you want these loading values, the ones on the arrows themselves, to be, see they're kind of squishing up here, but they don't look very good to me. I see 60, or is that an 80? I'll have to blow that up so we can see. Please hold. Uh, 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 uh. Up, please. So here's the first one. It's 0.85. That's really good. 0.68 is close. 0.65 is close. 0.82 is good. good. 0.68 is, is close. Remember, we want 7 or above, but anything close we can live with. We got a 8.8. .8. We got the low ones down here. 0 0.51, 0 0.65, 0 0.56. Okay. So some of these are good. Some of them are not so good. Let's take a look at the second one here. All right, let me see if I can. So what I'm trying to do is pull this out so we can see the numbers a little bit clearer. So if I unclick the property link... This should just drag out there. Oh, yeah, I'm loving it now, baby. Loving it. So now we go back to this guy. Bam. Oh, and I see right now that uh, factors number two, they're all pretty crappy. You got one that's over 0.7. That's it. You got one that's 0.69. So factor two, not a good factor. Factor three, again, you got one, two good ones. You got 0.83, you got 0.79, but the rest of these are really low. And then... Number four, let's get this guy in the middle up here. I'm looking at, what is that? Um, 0 0.65, 0 0.62, too low. 0 0.70 is good. 0 0.24, no way, Jose. So these are loading up pretty weak, but again, we're going to let the, the software do the talking for us. All right, let me drag it back where you can see what I was doing there. Sorry about the other stuff. But this, okay, this, this is what I call the remote control. Right? This is pre-calculations, right? You don't see any values here. This is after it's been calculated as values there. So if you're going to make any changes, you got to switch it back to this one and then rerun it to get the other one. But we're not making any changes here. Okay, so we're going to look at the output. And here we go. Amos output. So the first chi-squared right off the bat. Okay, let's just look at the model fit first. C-min. Don't worry about this. This is always significant. And it basically means that your model and the perfect model are significantly different from each other, which it's always like this. But now I'm looking at the fit indices. They are way lower than 0.9. So strike one, the... 
the, the fit indices aren't where they sh supposed to be. We'll go down here and check the rim C's. This is supposed to be less than 0.05, and P-close should be greater than 0.05 because this is testing the null hypothesis that states that the RMSEA is less than 0.05, so you reject that because this is less than 0.05, and so this is basically strikes two and three. So in other words, the model, even though it showed up in EFA as, as those specific items under those new factors, the four new factors, confirmatory factor analysis is blowing this thing out of the water. It's saying, no, this thing is not worthy to run as a factor analysis. And other things, real quick, we're going to look at the, the um, discriminant validity, which is basically you're looking at the correlations between the new factors, and if it's greater than 0.5, you're violating the assumption. It's not an assumption, it's a test. You're violating that test. So between the first and the second one, I'm seeing 0.72, which is bad. Between second and third, 0.52, that's kind of close. Between the second and the fourth, that's 0.52. Again, that's kind of close. And between the third and the fourth, it's 0.62. So you're, you, you don't have discriminant validity. You don't have a good goodness of fit where it's supposed to be. So in other words, this model is shooting down your EFA. So in other words, if you were going to get this published, they would insist that you rewrite the survey questions because they're not loading up worth a darn underneath the CFA process. And again, that's why the publishers insist on you guys doing confirmatory factor analysis if you're going to publish. So... All right, uh, so that's two out of two that I've done that are both crappy. I'm going to have to find you one that works. All right, hope this helps. MGZ, out.